Welcome to this edition of our interview series with thought leaders in the commercial drone industry. My name is Don Weigel, I'm your host today, and with me is Chad Partridge from 2D3 Sensing, a company that specializes in motion imagery and vision uh, sensing for the commercial drone industry. Chad, welcome to the program. Thank you, Don. So, Chad, not many of our guests uh, have actually received an Emmy Award, and uh, I know you did some years back for your development of the Buju software suite. Can you tell me about that and how that led you from entertainment into drones? Sure. Um, many people don't know that 2D3 sensing, uh, you know, originally 2D3, did have its origins in the entertainment industry. We have a parent company, the Oxford Metrics Group, OMG, uh, and one of their subsidiaries is Vicon Motion Systems. And Vicon uh, produces optical uh, motion tracking capture uh, devices and uh, you've probably seen uh, you know the suits with the many balls multiple cameras that they're tracking uh, tracking objects creating models of those objects and then using those in TVs films and uh, most importantly games originally 2d3 was a spin out of, uh, of Vicon uh, to focus entirely on computer vision related solutions. Its first software package was a product called Buju. It uh, solved a problem called uh, motion matching. And what motion matching does is by taking, uh, you know, multiple uh, frames of imagery from different cameras, it could go back and, and just from the video work out uh, the camera parameters and doing the camera calibration for multiple scenes. So that is how 2D3 got its start. In 2006, there was a realization, well, there's probably a greater applicability for computer vision type technologies in this emerging aerial imaging market. So 2D3 switched from uh, being in the entertainment industry to focusing on aerial imagery, uh, giving some of the you know, technologies and capabilities back to Vicon, and that's what we've been doing ever since. So what are the types of problems that 2D3 Sensing is working on solving for the industry? We're providing all types of visualization capabilities, um, video enhancements like deblurring, de uh, dehazing, super resolution stabilization, doing things like mosaicing, and doing even advanced things like reticle, uh, our geo-registration capability, where we're improving the metadata in videos based on reference maps. It's a very powerful capability. We're doing things server-side, storing, indexing, archiving, um, you know, federating, uh, and, and you know, doing this on an enterprise level, and then we're providing SDKs too. I, I know this technology has been used uh, in military applications. How do you see it evolving into commercial applications? There are endless applications on the commercial side, areas of agriculture, um, asset management and inspection, um, providing some levels of uh, inspections, uh, border, border inspections, real estate filming, uh, just filming motion, imager, uh, mo motion pictures overall. We can go down the line. But uh, you, you know, one can easily argue that the commercial opportunity will be far greater than the defense art opportunity. And as you move into commercial, um, what do you see as the potential impediments or roadblocks for the adoption of the technology? So the first thing that will come to most people's minds when that subject comes up is that there are going to be broad-based regulatory barriers and that we have to get over these regulatory barriers before we can see adoption. Interestingly enough, on the 2D3 sensing side, um, our capabilities, whether it's manned platforms or unmanned platforms, they're applicable on both sides. So, it's, so regulations not being solved is not going to kill us. However, it's very clear that people using uh, unmanned systems and drones 
opens up a much wider user base. Um, places that drones can go that manned aircraft can't, um, applications that are not suited for uh, manned aircraft that are well suited for drones. So what you're going to see is when, that, when we get over that barrier, there's going to be an explosion of new users and volume of aerial imagery, and it is certainly in the best interests of 2D3 sensing to you know, help that along and see unmanned be adopted uh, and so we can all take advantages of what that can bring. It, you know, a, a, a concept that's very close to my heart is the, the notion of autonomous unmanned vehicles. Do you see that as a game changer and you know, how is that going to change the adoption curve? You know, if we're going to see more adoption of commercial technologies, people just want to be able to push a button and have things work. I think that we're getting there and that, and that we're all getting there. You know, for, for, for instance, on the airware side, you guys have recently partnered with NASA on the UTM, the uh, traffic management system. That's another area of wide autonomy, uh, that these are hard problems. But, you know, you guys solve that problem well. We solve our problem well. And we all do these in, you know, a, a reasonable amount of time. And I do think the concept of fully autonomous drones where users are completely not involved and they are providing value on a service-based level that we can actually achieve that in a reasonable period of time. And, and just one last kind of wide open question is, where do you see your technology going five years from now? How will people be using 2D3 sensing technology in, in ways that we're, we're not even thinking about right now? We have so many capabilities. I, I, and I could uh, sit here and give you detailed, detailed feature lists of all the things that we can do. But I think what you're going to see is an emergence of those capabilities in an autonomous fashion. I think in five years, particularly as the regulatory barriers begin to fall, I think there's going to be a quantum leap in the efficiency uh, uh, and of how quickly we can get the information we're looking for. Great. All right, Chad. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Great to have you.